thank you so much for taking the time out to talk to us today. You're out at Agnes Banks and uh, you've got a little special lady beside you. Yeah, I thought for your listeners we might we might put Pahuta Kara on the screen and they might be able to enjoy the little connection there between the trackside NZ viewers. <laughs> Often chances at the races tomorrow. Yeah, she's um, the model of consistency, isn't she? She rarely wins, but she's always thereabouts. How do you think she's going to go tomorrow? That's right. Look, I think uh, I think back to her best Randwick form, and on the soft track, she's got a bit of a chance. My my uh, my cameraman at the moment is actually my driver, and he's not the he's not the guy. <laughs> <by, uh, laughs> I'm feeling carsick. <laughs> Can you still see me there? I can see you. Yep, yep. Uh, so, um, look, I think she can run a good race. She's uh, she's fifteen. She's fifteen to one. But you know, uh, don't don't forget. Two starts ago, she was favourite in the Cornwall Classic. So, uh, I'm hoping she's uh, a, a knockout chance for us. But she's going to have to beat the stable mate Elise, and the two of them are uh, having their final race starts for us before they go to stud later this year. So, hopefully, uh, one of them can go out on a bang. Um, you didn't have much luck with the draws, though, did you? Geez, they're out in the car park. Drawn very wide out, but you know, uh, the race has got lots of speed in it. Uh, the leaders are quick, the horses that settle just behind them are quick, uh, and, and these two mares will enjoy that strong pace, particularly if they're going to have to give up a lot of ground uh, from those draws. Um, Elise, in particular, she was kept to sort of the sprint distances last campaign back up to the mile, but it's a race she's won before this race, isn't it? Yeah, she won the race two years ago, quite right. Uh, she came off a, a, a similarly unplaced run at Rose Hill. Um, I think the three and a half length defeat in the uh, in the George Ryder wasn't too bad a run. And that sort of form should read well for a Coolmore legacy. And I can tell you both horses are really flying on the track. Uh, another one that uh, you must be pretty excited about is Colette in the Australian Oaks. And she's really just uh, arrived on the scene with a bang and... Uh, what a step up from, she won three times in a row, but jumped into that stakes company like she was uh, made for it. did, yeah. I, I love the fact that we've sort of held her back, held her back all preparation. We've spaced her runs. We've kept her healthy and, and, and full of herself. She uh, she felt she felt um, an absolute queen at the Provincials in her, mm. uh, in her two wins before running at Randwick on the weekend. So by the time we got to Randwick, she was, you know, red hot favourite. Uh, feeling good about herself, and, uh, and and I love the fact that she showed a really, really impressive turn of foot at the end of 2,000 metres, particularly from a tricky position in the run. That should have her, that should have her perfect for the Oaks this weekend. She just needs to be good enough to match the class of a filly like Probabil, uh, and, uh, and, and if she can, then uh, she's right in that race. Obviously, you have no concerns with the 2,400 metres with her. She's out of a Singspiel mare. She's very, very stoutly bred on the dam side, and uh, and and by Hallowed Crown, who's uh, got a bit of Zabiel in his pedigree. I think the uh, I think the journey will be right up her alley. And uh, also, tell me about backing her up. I can imagine if you've decided to do that. Obviously, she's come through the race really well last week. Yeah, she's done particularly well. She was just bucking and squealing on the Sunday morning straight after the run. Uh, she pulled up better than any of our runners on 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 the weekend, and uh, and and I think that. While she's got to prove she can back up and she's got to prove that she can run the mile and a half, those things are, are yet to be determined. She needs to be able to go with some of those classy fillies from the Vinery, the race that was run the week before. I think, uh, I think she's up to it and, uh, and, and she's, certainly, she's certainly deserving of her chance. You've got uh, Flit in the Arrowfield Sprint, a 1,000 guineas winner who was last seen in the All-Star Mile. Uh, had a freshen up and, and what do you make of her chances? She's got to turn it around because she was easily shaken off in the All-Star Mile. Um, but the thing about that was uh, with the blinkers on, she, just, uh, she was just ridden upside down and, uh, and, and, and just feeling a little too well above herself before the race. And uh, her, her rider just wasn't quite able to contain her speed on that occasion. Back to six furlongs, freshened up, little gear change. I think she's on song for a big run. She nearly won the Percy Sykes uh, on this day 12 months ago, the same course. And I think that... She sets up quite quite well for the uh, for the challenge. Cosmic Force, Lilla Mai, some good three-year-olds are in the race, um, but some of the better three-year-old sprinters of her generation went around the week before, and she doesn't have to tackle them. So uh, so this is a good race for her. You've also got uh, a strong hand in the Sapphire Stakes, three in the race. Surely you can take this one out with either soothing Savatiano or, or Manicure. Um, I I think that those mares are in good 
they're in good shape for the race. They're sort of well in, and uh, and and, in, and the form is good. I like I like all three of them as chances. Soothing's probably the longest price of the three, but she's an excellent place chance because she'll really rock at home, provided she runs a strong 1,200 metres. And, uh, and, and well, Sebastiano, she started favourite in a group one two starts ago and in the mix in the Galaxy last time. So she's also, um, she's also a, a good chance in the race and Manicure has to have improved from the first up run. Uh, in race number two, you've also got Nick Point and Hilo. Have you got a, a quick comment on those? Well, look, I think, I think Hilo's run that, at, at Rose Hill on slipper day was excellent. Three wide on the on that track that day was very difficult to do. Um, the rail was the best place to be, and uh, and and he covered ground and still surged to the line for a placing in the um, in the Derby Munro. He's uh, he's going to run well. Uh, the other horse still needs to prove at Nick Point at at, uh, at seven furlongs, but um, but there was a lot to like about a, 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 some of his training bet between between now and, uh, and and his last start. And if he can improve on that uh, Canberra Guineas run, then he's, he's right in this race. You've got a, a strong hand on Saturday. It's the million dollar question, but best bet for, for the weekend? I think our best bet would be Colette in the Oaks. Okay. But you know what? Everyone watching from New Zealand should have a little something on Pahutakawa. Okay, there you go. The omen bet. <laughs> and what about an update uh, on Bivouac for us? Uh, he's going terrific. He, he's gleaming since the, the, the run in the TJ Smith. Uh, fortunately, he missed the kick. But, um, but it doesn't seem so long ago that he was storming to the line in the new market and, uh, and a, and a career-defining moment so far for him. Hopefully, you can build on that in the all-age next week. It's uh, obviously Easter weekend. Forgot to say Happy Easter to you. But um, for horse racing people, it's pretty much business as normal, isn't it? Do we have any Cummings traditions when it comes to uh, an Easter weekend? Uh, Emily, hard work. That's the only <laughs> thing that Cummings is now around Easter. And you, and you know this. Uh, you know this. You know where I am at the moment. I'm out at Osborne Park. I've got, I've got Tomo here. He used to be one of your managers. Yeah. To bring back memories. It does. It brings back plenty of memories. Uh, good old days they were. <laughs> I'm sure they'll fill you in on a few stories as well. A few good stories. <laughs> we'll do some. Uh, we'll do some uh, Easter egg hunts with the kids there over the weekend, and uh, and uh, and of course. Uh, of course, Mass is, uh, is televised on air this year. Um, so yeah. Firsts for us. And, uh, and the main thing is that the, the Easter message gets relayed by everyone. If you could give us here in New Zealand uh, one horse to follow going forward from the Godolphin camp, who would you who would you pick? I think you should follow Bivouac. Okay, there you go. Thank you so much for your time, James. Great to catch up with you. And best of luck on Saturday. Cheers.